That seems weird. A ver si alguien va a hacer al seguir y con esto. Welcome to the meeting of the Board of Directors. Oh, welcome to the meeting of the Board of Directors of the State of Hawaii Department of Agriculture. I am the chair, Sharon Hurd. Prior to calling the meeting to order, Stephen Dalton will give some instructions. Good morning. As an attendee, your microphone will be automatically muted during the meeting unless you're providing testimony. For each agenda item you wish to testify on, please click the raise hand button found on your Zoom screen. Board staff will individually enable each testifier to unmute their microphone. When recognized by the chair, please unmute your microphone before speaking and mute your microphone after you finish speaking in order to prevent audio feedback. When testifying, you will be asked to identify yourself and the organization, if any, that you represent. Each testifier will be limited to two minutes of testimony per agenda item. It, for those of you, I don't see anybody joining by phone, um, but just in case, um, when the chairperson asks for public testimony, you may indicate you want to testify by entering star and then nine on your phone's keypad. After entering star and then nine, a voice prompt will let you know that the host of the meeting has been notified. Uh, uh, when recognized by the chairperson, you may unmute yourself by pressing star and then six on your phone. A voice prompt will let you know that you are unmuted. Once you are finished speaking, please enter star and then six again to mute yourself. In the event that connectivity is lost and attempts to repair the connection exceed 30 minutes, the meeting may be terminated or continued to another date and time. Consult the webpage for updated information. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Meeting is called to order at 9.06 on Tuesday, January 23rd. First business is the uh, approval of the minutes of the last meeting on December the 5th. Excuse me, Chair. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. No. Sorry. Uh, if I may, uh, for the board members, if we could amend uh, or I'd like to add a phrase to page 8, line 31 after dis the term discussion colon to add confirms that the ROE primarily involves installation and camera checking. I'm sorry that was omitted. Thank you. May I have an approval? Motion, motion to approve. Motion to approve. So moved, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Second. Diane. Diane Lay, thank you. Uh, Presentation by staff. Oh, we do the presentation okay. first. So, sorry. Call for the vote. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion to approve the minutes is amended as approved. Um, and I did skip forward, having the minutes on the mind. I uh, did do a roll call vote. So we'll do a roll call vote of the members present. When your name is called, please indicate your presence with a here or present and state who, if anyone over the age of 18 is present in the room with you. This will also serve as a roll call vote. For each subsequent vote, I will ask if there are any objections. If there are none, then the motion will be approved on the same basis as the initial roll call. Sharon Hurd, Chairperson here, and I will take this moment to uh, welcome the ex officio member from DLNR, the Deputy Director, Ryan Kanaka-Ole, Welcome, Ryan. And as a member of the board, I'm taking role. Ryan Kanaka Ole. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first, uh, the governor's on the meeting. Um, the first deputy for DLNR. 
Brian Crawford is present. Um, glad to be here and I'm looking forward to working with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Anya Vichorek is excused. Deputy Dane Wicker is at, representing DBIT ex officio. Maria. Oh, she's here? Just started. Just started. Okay. Good morning, Mary Alice. Good morning. Representing DLNR ex officio, Mary Alice Evans. Yes. Yeah. So roll call it to determine if you are here and alone. Mary Alice, are you here and alone? Oh, she just put her headphones in. I don't think. Um, are you muted, Mary Alice? No, it's your headphone, I think. Yeah. No? We can hear you now. Thank you. We can hear you now. Thank you. Taking roll, Mary Alice Evans. Present and alone. Thank you. Diane Lay. Present and alone. Vincent Mina. Present and alone. Fred Cowell, Kauai member, is excused. Randy Cabral. Present and alone. Thank you. And Young is excused. And Jip James Golds. Aloha Kayaka, present and alone. Okay, thank you. We have approved the minutes, so we'll be moving on to. Item for communications from divisions and administration. Item 4A1 is a request to consign, request to consent to assign general lease number S-4803, Robert G. Diana and James C. Downing, trust lessee assignor, Robert G. Dana and Deborah J. Dana, co-trustees of the Dana family, joint revocable trust, dated June 21st, 1994. Assignee, TMK 3rd Division 1-5-1116-039, Lot 12, Poho Agricultural Park, Kuna District, Island of Hawaii, Hawaii. May I have a motion to approve the request? No move, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Seconded by Diane. Thank you, Diane. Presentation by staff. There's Brandy. Good morning, Chair and members of the board. My name is Brandy Ayo, property manager with the Armed Div Division on the Big Island. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Just can't see you. Okay. I know. I don't know why my video isn't working. Oh, I look forward to seeing you every time. <laughs> Flattery will get you nowhere. I <laughs> I heard it gets you everywhere. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why my video isn't working. I apologize. Okay, so this morning I have a request for consent to assign general lease number 4803, Robert G. Deanna and James C. Downing, lessee assignor, to Robert G. Deanna and Deborah Deanna, co-trustees of the Deanna Family Joint Revocable Trust dated June 21st, 1994, assignee, TMK 3-1-5-116-039, lot 12 in the Pahoa Ag Park, Puna District, Island of Hawaii. The Board of Land and Natural Resources awarded General Lease 4803 to Richard Iwasaki commencing on May 1st, 1982. By Mesne assignment, the lease was transferred to Robert Deanna and James Downing in May of 1998. I'm sorry, 1988. General Lease 4803 was transferred to the Department of Agriculture by Executive Order 3380 in February of 1998. Since taking over General Lease 4803, the subject property was developed into a viable farming operation. A farm dwelling and greenhouse structures were constructed, and a variety of fruit, trees, and herbs, herbs were cultivated. In 2014, Mr. James Downing relocated off island and has since became disabled. In accordance with the HAR and the terms of the lease, Mr. Downing is is requesting to assign his interest in General Lease 4803 to the Deanna Family Re Joint Revocable Trust as amended and restated. This assignment will include a farm dwelling, greenhouse structures, and a large inventory of, va inventory of various crops. Robert and Deborah Deanna have over 
35 years of farming experience. Together, they've developed the subject property into the successful operation it is today. Mr. and Mrs. Diana would like to expand on their current opera, uh, production with plans to cultivate a new citrus grove and cacao orchard on the back portion of the property that has not yet been developed. Mr. and Mrs. Diana qualify as bona fide farmers with more than two years of full-time farming experience and satisfy the eligibility requirements pursuant to the HAR. There is no consideration for the assignment of lease. Um, we recommend that the Board of Agriculture approve the assignment of general lease 4803 from Robert Diana and James Downing, lessee assignor, to the Deanna Family Joint Revocable Trust dated June 21st, 1994, as amended and restated assignee. Thank you. All right, Kennedy. Sharon, we can't hear you. Chair. Oh. Okay. You should be able to. Mary, Mary Alice, I, perhaps it okay. is on your side. Is anyone else on the board having di difficulty? I can hear you now. Interesting. Thank you. Um, I asked uh, no one from the public wish to give testimony. So is there any discussion from the board on this lease? Jimmy? Jimmy? Yeah, I just like to say these pictures means a lot. It looks like they're very good stewards uh, of of the the farm, and very well done. I mean, very well manicured, and so I'm in total support of this. Thank you, Jimmy, and Vince. Yes, Chair. Thank you, Brandy. Um, just a question about the ag park in general. Is it is all the lots in uh, production? No, not all of them. We have a few vacancies in the Pohua Ag Park that we are working toward getting leased, hopefully in the beginning. We go uh, beginning first quarter of this year. Hopefully we can go out for public notice. <clears throat> and thank you. What is the average size of these lots? You know, we have... <laughs> We have a large amount of them that are 10 acres or more, and then we have a large amount that is like five acres or so. So it's kind of a split. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Vincent. Any other board discussion? Dan, Dan Lay. Thank you, Chair. Um, Brandy, uh, this is just a process question. Um, I'm looking at, you know, the, the photos and, you know, and, and the narrative about there being a house on the property and, and the greenhouse is, um, you know, it looked, and as um, James said, you know, it looks fairly well maintained, um, but I noticed there's no consideration. Now I'm just assuming that all the parties sign off on on the uh, transfer of these leases, the oh, reassignment yes. of these leases. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And they were partners. Okay. They were partners um, that mm -hmm. for whatever yeah. reason, they're gonna go their separate ways. So yeah. <clears throat> right. Yeah, and I, you know, yeah, I'm just assuming that, um, you know, it may have been different people put money into the home and things like that. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Diane. Further board discussion? Okay, hearing none, calling for the vote. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you. Moving on to item four two, request to approve sublease between the Hamakua Agricultural Cooperative, lessee, sublessor, and William Beach, sublessee. May I have a motion, motion to approve the request? Thank you, Diane. And Jimmy, second? Second, fine. Thank you. Presentation by staff. Is that you, Brandy? Okay. Yes, it is. Okay, this next one is a request to approve a sublease between the Hamako Agricultural Cooperative and William Beach Sublessee, general lease number S5551, TMK 3-4-6-003-020, lot numbers 2B as in boy and 2D as in dog in the Honoka'ia Hamako uh, district of the island of Hawaii. 
William Beach is requesting to sublease lots 2B and 2D under general lease five, S5551, consisting of approximately 19.232 acres in total. Mr. Beach is currently a member of the Hamakua Agricultural Cooperative and holds a sublease for lots 1, 2A, and 2C under general lease 5551, where he grows a various uh, grows various orchard trees and raises cattle. Mr. Beach is requesting to sublease lots 2B and 2D, which are contiguous to his existing lots to expand on his current farming operation. William Beach is a sublease lessee in good, con good standing and qualifies as a bona fide farmer with more than two years of full-time farming e experience and meets the application and, and eligibility requirements in accordance with the HAR. Mm -hmm. It is our recommendation that the Board of Agriculture approve the sublease between the Hamakua Ag Co-op Lessee Sublessor and William Beach Sublessee for lot numbers 2B and 2D in Honoka'ia under General Lease 5551 through the expiration date of June 29, 2033. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Does anyone from the public wish to give testimony? There are no raised hands at this time. Thank you. Discussion from the board? Vince Mina. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a process question, Brandy. Um, you know, in past times of, of you know, Hamakua Ag Co-op coming up, the road has always been a question of mine. What is the status of the road uh, and, and as far as the maintenance of it? Who's responsible again? Is it the cooperative that's responsible for that road? You know, I don't know. I just recently took over the Hamakua Egg Co-op management and I am not 100% sure. I can check on that and get back to you if that's okay. Yeah, I appreciate it because okay. I know there was a it's all bus up, you know, and, and, and just wondering at the point of uh, who's responsible for it never really got clear message. Uh, and then the farmers are dealing with access, you know, issues and the, the amount of rain it gets over there. I just wonder where it's gotten to, if anybody's taken on the, the uh, responsibility of, of, you know, making it happen. Is it the cooperative, you know, the farmers in the cooperative or what? Okay, I can check on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brandy, for noting that. Any other board discussion? None? No board discussion. Continuing calling for the vote. Are there any objections? Seeing and hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, board. We're moving on now to old business, section five. No old business, no new business for this meeting. Moving on to the director's report. I'm, thank you, board. I'm using the director's report to kind of give you an idea of what is, what is maybe coming up or what we're working on. The first is the intent to employ a collection agency to address delinquencies and payments by lessees of HDOA for delivery of water for agricultural operations. We're, we're We've been in discussion, as you know, board, for quite some time on the delinquencies and uh, decided that it's time to perhaps move forward with a plan so that the water rates may, you know, we can maybe postpone an increase in water rates. Okay, so that's coming up at a future meeting, maybe hopefully in, in the March meeting. The second director's report item is the bills that have passed through to the uh, 2024 legislative session. We have four this time. AGR 1 relates to agricultural loans, which was prompted by this board. The request is to cap the interest rate at uh, either 3 or 4%, depending on the type of loan, so as not to incur a surprising rate. Uh, if we're tied to the prime, then it could be a pretty a, 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 you know, surprising rate increase, which we're trying to avoid. Second bill is relating to hemp. It's a cleanup bill that allows the department to oversee some of the the uh, other than just transportation inspect for different regulatory things. Um, that's AGR two. The AGR four bill relates to pesticides. What we're asking for is to replace two members on the pesticide council, council board gives advice on pesticides. The two positions were allocated one to sugar, one to pineapple. We're moving that out to the one for diversified ag 
and one for coffee. And then the fourth is relating to the strategic plan to increase food production and food security. We're seeking some funding to uh, do more investigation and to update the baseline map that was done, I believe in 2020, and then again in 2020, was done in, there were, there were two previous years, 2016, I think in 2020. So here we are in 2024, four years later, we'd like another baseline study that uh, is, so helpful to our tracking our progress. Um, okay, then the other item on the director's report. I'm sorry, should I probably ask, did we lose all of them or did you have to put testing? Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Oh, that's up to you. Uh, how, when did you want to ask for the test? Okay, I will. I have them more at the end. Okay, I think since I'm on a roll, I'll ask at the end. Okay. The question was about asking for public testimony. Um, item three is uh, we're, we're beginning to consider participation in an MOU. We've actually started discussion between ADC, Agri Business Development Corporation, the High Technology Development Corporation, HTDC, and NELHA to further develop and grow aquaculture industry in Hawaii through improved coordination um, and increased collaboration. The focus of the participation of HDOA will be to increase food production. Um, earlier this month, we did a presentation to Housing Sustainability and Health Committee of the City and County of Honolulu. And the purpose of this meeting was they asked for an update on invasive species. And during that meeting, we asked for coordination of a rapid resp response to any invasive species outbreak and perhaps um, implementing an MOU between the C Department of Agriculture and the City and County of Honolulu for a rapid response should the outbreak or detection be reported on a park or a beach or maybe even a golf course, the delays in receiving right of entry could be, you know, could be impactful if it's a week. So this way we have an MOU that we can go in and at least confirm that it is the infestation or the detection is a confirmed invasive. So that's what we're working on. And Chair. Excuse yes. me. Is so, there any any um uh, Jimmy, I mean Vincent, is it okay if I go to public testimony first? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Is there any uh testimony from the public? There are no hands raised at this time. There's a hand. Yeah, that's uh my no, it's a... oh, okay. Uh thank you. And Jim, uh Vincent. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um on the first um item, the intent to employ a collection agency to address delinquencies and payments by leases for delivery of water. Um, you know, um, um, since I'm so pro farmer advocate and, and just the idea of the problem being that farmers aren't paying for water bills, um, you know, it, to me, it's like, I feel like chasing after them for delinquencies is, uh, is a, is shooting at the wrong target um you know just as a matter of a fact when carbon levels in the soil are raised um we don't use as much water and i think a lot of the practices these days in farming uh is incumbent upon uh, a, a, a need to use more water than than needed or is necessary in a sense you know, we look for any ways to save money. I know when I first um, started farming, I was buying um, uh, material, uh, uh, sunshine mixed material to grow our microgreens. And I tried composting and using it and it wasn't working out. And I got soil tests and, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, I wasn't spending um, $200 every eight days. And so saving that money really helped uh the viability of our operation so with that said is i'm just wondering what are we doing to support uh education of farmers um uh, access of uh any kind of information or or uh availability of of um, um protocols that will support farmers ability to raise their carbon levels in their soil so they don't use as much water as opposed to chasing them down for using just to try to make ends meet you know using the water they need to uh, use and then and then subsequently uh 
uh, not being able to pay those bills. So I just, I'm just always looking for other ways of farmers being able to, you know, get rid of the expense of farming, so to speak, so they can actually make a living at it. It's such a big challenge, especially here in Hawaii. And um, I'm just wondering, you know, what we're doing in that in that capacity besides chasing them down for, you know, paying the bill. Spoken like a true farmer, Vincent. Um, we we go for education before regulation. There have been several bills coming through. You know, I think what we try to do is we step away from telling a farmer what to do on his property. We, our role as uh, the board and the department is pretty much to deliver the water. And the reason for this item on the agenda today is because we have really tried different things, um, especially going to a collection agency was on the last of the list because it does, you know, impair, it does get on your credit report. That being said though, when it became necessary to raise the water rates to support the system, because the system is maintained through the, the collection of the, the water rates. So the pushback from the industry, precisely because of what you just said, Vincent, that it's, it's tough to be a farmer and water is very important to farming. Because of the pushback on don't raise the rates, you know, that was loud and clear we had to go to something that we had to try something. And this is one of the, the tools in our toolbox to use to try to keep the water rates as they are. Um, and it's just on the agenda. If we move forward and find that this is not the, the way we wanna go, we can always change. I, I do want you to know though, that it's it's something we're pursuing. And, and, and to follow up that, thank you so much, Chair. And just to follow up on that, how about if we go out and, um, and ask, get the legislature to support policy to invite in private sector support to pay for whatever infrastructure to deliver the water. And then that person can have their name on it. It's the so-and-so water system, you know, or whatever. Um, uh, so this way that we don't have to go down this road of, of uh, beating up the farmer any more than they already beat up. Okay. Um, it's an idea. Hmm. There's also too many people left. But. Okay. Um, Mary Alice. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I chaired the Greenhouse Gas Sequestration Task Force, um, which was created by the legislature to uh, study the potential for different soils in Hawaii to, uh, to hold on to carbon. And so CTAR uh, did the work and the uh, report indicated that some soils in Hawaii uh, will um, uh, uh, hold on to carbon and others are much less so. So it's really a matter of where the farm is located as to how much carbon it can um, absorb. Uh, but I wanted to, um, to Mince's uh, thought on um, subsidies, one of the we work closely with the Department of Agriculture events on that. Um, one of the points that was uh, that we raised uh, in uh, in the greenhouse gas sequestration task force was that farmers should not be uh, burdened with the cost of uh, of mitigating greenhouse gases for the planet because they're already in Hawaii. At, at so fragile and vulnerable economically. So if um, you spoke to water infrastructure, I think our uh, uh, report indicates that if farmers are going to be uh, charged with uh, sequestering carbon to mitigate greenhouse gases, that there should be uh, some help for them economically because they really can't afford to take on planetary burdens um, without some kind of uh, support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Mary Alice. Next, we have Diane Lay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, to, to Vince's um, point and the uh, issues that Mary Alice raises, yeah, I think, yeah, we do need to take a holistic approach to this. Um, but in the meantime, you know, as policy develops and, and the concepts are developed, 
we need to have equitable application of the laws and rules that exist because it's not fair for me to defer making payment on my water bill and my neighbors are are paying theirs. So, um, so you know, while I don't have the details of, you know, of moving this to a collection agency, I'm certainly open to listening to that. Um, and I do want to note that in terms of, of improving the, um, the capacity of soils, the department is um, with the support of the legislature providing, you know, for the compost reimbursement program, um, which um, can be substantial for um, producers that it works for. So, and, and as, as Mary Alice says, in soils that, that will retain um, the humus. And um, yeah, I've seen that <laughs> on my own places, you know, of business. It's not always easy to maintain the carbon levels. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Further board discussion? Right. Randy. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Just a couple of comments. I think I think we all know that, you know, DOA is not funded properly uh, by the state. And as long as we're dependent on revenues from water leases and stuff to fund the department, we're never going to be able to, to reduce the cost to farmers. And the only way of doing that is if DOA, all of their operations funding comes from the general fund. So you don't get stuck uh, having to generate your own funds to fund the water systems and whatever else. And I think we failed miserably at, at the ledge at that. And, and same with the university, you know, it's the extension stop to help farmers become successful. And again, the extension service has been cut back substantially over the years to where you hardly have any extension agents anymore. So it's a complete failure uh, to support ag at the state level with funding from the ledge. I mean, we talk, we talk, we talk, but when it comes down to funding, it's not there, uh, unfortunately. And I'm not sure what the answer is to that uh, other than continuing to lobby and help in funding the department, funding CTAR, um, and continuing to try and subsidize farmers so that we can continue to reach the goal of some sort of sustainability uh, in the state. Thank you, Randy. You've spoken again like a farmer. It's good to have voices of farmers on board. Um, Seeing uh, any other comments of any one of these four items on the report? Chair, I'd like to thank you for the bill capping the uh, interest rate on loans. I think that is very timely and helpful to farmers um, where we saw the difference between the emergency um, access deer fencing loans at 3% and the immediate reset last January. Uh, following the Federal Reserve's increases to six uh, plus percent for regular loans, we could see how devastating that is for farmers. So thank you very much for uh, pursuing that bill. And should you need uh, testimony and support, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, Mary Alice. Uh, the credit goes to the Agricultural Loan Division that took your suggestion board from one of the meetings, I think it was the January meeting, and uh, the outrage from the board that uh, this happened. Uh, we took that from you and uh, ran with it. So back at you. Uh, any other comment from the board on the director's report? Otherwise, Diane. oh, Diane Lake, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Uh I was interested in um, AGR 14 related to strategic plan to increase uh, food production and food security. If you could elaborate a little bit about um, what yes. where the direct um, department is headed or the administration as a whole. Thank you. Yes, thank you. The uh, AGR 14 is for back at the double food production idea. What we're trying to do is increase economic profitability for the farmers, as well as providing the resources that are needed. Um, so that I always say, it's pretty much on biosecurity, but wouldn't it be great for all the farmers to wake up and not have to battle invasive species that day? 
every farm, every ranch has an invasive. So through the provisions of this bill, we're trying to, you know, feel out a lot of the areas where the Hawaii Farm Bill will eventually uh, try to resolve. Um, one of the things is the 2016 baseline, the 2020 baseline helped us gauge the, the difference in the topography and what was being grown. This bill has funding to do a 2024 baseline to try to see where we are in, in the next four years after COVID. Um, that's the kind of detail that we have in there. We're, we're talking about increasing food hub support, increasing um, farmers' availability to, you know, um, everybody says, thank goodness for Act 90, and it's true. Act 90 is bringing over additional lands into agriculture, but what we lack is agricultural production. So we've got to take the lands that we have and move them into production. This bill kind of addresses how we're going to try to do that by providing resources and water. More water is key. So it's a it's a long winded summary of, of your uh, your question, but that's basically it. Hey Vince, sure, Thank sure. You, just sir. as a co final comment, to all that. Um, I think one of the as a farmer, one of the the biggest challenges there is is to overproduce, not overproduce the land. And so I I, never, I, I think they're they're uh, you know working with what we have. Is so important in a way that that is that is makes it um uh you know the word sustainable that to where your land is able to produce at a level to where your inputs aren't over over uh, amping the farm uh, uh in, in order to produce a crop right and so uh yeah um i'm really interested in this in this in having a strategic plan uh in that respect and I think it ties into the whole uh, point I was making earlier about using legislature to Randy's comment, you know, uh, as it being a total failure, um, using legislature not for funding, but for policy that will support funding coming from outside that would be protected. Um, that that In other words, that funding would be as a legacy funding, not as a return on investment. Uh, so then the the state see because the thing that blows me away is that we are the furthest landmass of any other landmass on the planet. We are so special here in Hawaii, yet we do not um, utilize that uh, that specialness uh, of of who we are, and we have all this expertise. You know, back in the day, a few years back, when I instigated the soil health initiative with uh, Travis Thomason, who was the head of, NR, uh, of NRCS. Um, <laughs> You know, we brought the agricultural sector to the table to have a conversation going, you know, people are looking for us to lead. How are we leading? And so it seems like um, uh, the only thing that I've come up with over the years in that respect is to is to not rely on the legislature for funding. And they're always telling they're always saying, oh, we don't have enough money. You know, we have to cut back this year. And and it's it's the same vibe every every time you go back in the ledge. So. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. I would just like to see maybe a different tack taken uh, to where we could in our lifetime see some semblance of of Hawaii ne being the agricultural juggernaut it can be for the rest of the planet. But, you know, that's just my point of view. Oh, thank you for that comment, Vince. Um, okay. Looks like no further hands are raised. And if that's the case, we will move to another chairman. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Um, motion to adjourn was Diane? Oh, Vincent. Vincent, sorry. And may I have a second for Diane? Thank you, Diane. Um, any board discussion? Thank you, Colin. Thank you, everybody. Nice to see everybody again. Take care. Well, let me, let me um, keep going. Keep going. It's okay. Calling for the vote. Motion to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Unanimous. Uh, um, the meeting is adjourned. And let me gavel at 942.
The next meeting will be held on February 27th, 2024 at 9 a.m. See you then. Record time. Hello, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>